Hello everyone, this is Nikki Baxley, and today we're going to be looking at using our layered stencils on colored cardstock. We're going to make four different cards, and we're going to be using this stencil. It is called the Sunflower Pattern. It has five different stencils. On some of the cards, we'll use several of the layers, but we may not use all of them because we've already got so much color in that background. But I'm going to show you four unique cards. We're going to do different things to each card so you get lots and lots of ideas. So let's get right into it. So I went on and cut my cardstock into A2 size pieces. And what you wanna do first is you want to pick out which stencil fits the best. This is actually not the largest one of the flower options. You know I said that we were going to pick and choose our stencils because we had so much color already. So I picked the second largest of the flower because it fit better on the A2 size. Now you can tape this down to your mat or you can use a sticky mat like I'm doing either way. What's up in my top left corner, these are paper pouncers. And what we have to start with when we're doing colored cardstock to make it the easiest and also make the colors show up great is a white pigment ink, okay? And when we're using pigment ink, think of it kind of like paint. It sits on top of the card and there really isn't any blending that needs to be done with it. It just needs to get this white color down on the paper. So for me, using the paper pouncers or some type of sponge is much easier to get some good white color down on the paper. You want to do this first because you do need to set it aside and let that white paint dry. So we're going to do all of our um, different colors. I'll show you the reveals on the different color paper. And then we're going to start adding different details to each card to make four unique cards. Now, if you want the leaf detail, you need to grab the other stencil. This stencil has um, the leaves in the centers. And like I said, there are multiple layers, but this is just one that I wanted to do white so that I could create leaves on my nice pattern for these cards. So here's the reveal of that orange one. We're going to set this aside. I love stencil reveals, so this is going to be very fun. Now we've got our green card. We did a black card. I really think this black card would look awesome with just black and white as the background and something really bright on the front. Remember when you're getting something off a sticky mat that bending it makes it much easier. Here is the pinkish red that we're going to use. Okay, we're going to start with our orange card, and I'm going to call this card's technique Detailed Ink Blending. <clears throat> we're going to layer inks. We're going to use some detailed brushes to create extra details, and it's going to look amazing. I started with the same stencil that I used on the white so that I would cover all of the white up. I'm using Rainbow Splash Canary, and I used a small paper pouncer again. You could use a blending brush. Now I love this contrast, but I'm going to go in with my next stencil and use a little darker yellow just to give it contrast. Then we're going to add super duper details. So with the next stencil, I'm going to use the Rainbow Splash Color Dandelion, which is a little bit darker yellow. You can tell even on the stencil that's a darker yellow, so it's going to give us a nice contrast. Our bottom layer is the bigger flower, and it is that lighter yellow, which was canary. Then we're coming in with our second layer, which is dandelion. And then our third layer is going to be the super detailed. We're going to use special brushes for that and create really tiny details that are going to make these flowers look amazing. So I did the leaves in the middle, and I did those in artichoke and in cappuccino, and now let's add those details. Here's where we are, but I'm going to go in with this beautiful mandarin color, which is so gorgeous. A detailed blending brush from Altenew. Of course, Simon Says Stamp sells these, and it comes to a little bit of a point. So look at what it's doing. I'm just going from the center out and creating that cool shadow. It's going to look amazing. Of course, I'm going to finish all the flowers like this, and then I'm going to go in with a little bit darker brown on the center of these flowers. So the center of these flowers has the little dots for the sunflower, so I am going to do those in a brown colored um, that's called mocha. It's a slightly darker color than cappuccino, which is what we used earlier. Now look at the difference that this detail brush created. It looks so beautiful. And that's really all you need on that card is that wonderful pattern. I put a large sentiment on it. I'm going to show it to you up close so you can kind of see how awesome those details are. So for this card, we did the stencil layering. Then we used some detail brushes to create even more detail. And 
it just turns out great. All we have to do is put a sentiment on it, and that's it. So my technique for the black card, I have two. One, I wanted to make more raised elements. And so I used some lunar paste. So I did color the first level just to get some yellow there. And then when I go in with the second level, I'm going to add lunar paste. I did the leaves really quick too. And this time I used some distress oxides. I used fossilized amber for the yellow for the detail with the lunar paste. So I'm using gold lunar paste and all of these products will be linked in the description below if you're ever wondering what colors I'm using. But I covered this whole thing with lunar paste, which is really fun to work with. It makes a really nice texture on your paper and it's so shiny. Let me show you the final results here. I'm going to lift this up so you can see how it stands up off the paper just to look extra beautiful. So look at these. You can see those little dots. Oh, it just looks so gorgeous in person. Now with this black card, I wanted to perfectly coordinate everything and I decided that I would just make my own card stock here with this lunar paste. Why I didn't start with a bigger piece, who knows. I thought I would start with cutting out the word thanks and just having that as my sentiment and then the card kind of evolved. So using a scraper with lunar paste just creates a thin little bit of this color and really it dries pretty quickly. I got a little piece of lint or something in there so I can go back and fix that and then I'm going to cut the word thanks out of this and I'm going to make one other piece to be my mat. I guess I just got overwhelmed with how beautiful it was and decided, you know what, this black would really stand out better if it had a gold mat around it. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just create this. Now, would this have worked better just to create a solid A2 sheet of lunar paste? Yes, because I could have just cut the thinks out of the middle, but I didn't think about that in time. And I'm just being real. Sometimes your card evolves as you go and you don't always do things as, as efficiently as you would want to if you were making it a second time. So I'm just going in, I know only about a fourth of an inch of this is gonna show. So I'm just taking my scraper and kind of pulling in from the edges. And I'm also using all the leftovers from that last card. So I got most of this done with just leftovers on my scraper and my mat. So if you're ever resistant to buy paste, I still have not had a single paste that I actually run out of the jar of. It may be years and I'm still using it um, if it doesn't dry up. That's why I use the little Glad press and seal to keep it from drying up. But I get a ton of use, like more than it seems like it should be possible out of these little jars. So when you are thinking about them, think about them for several um for a year, for if you keep it close um, and keep your little piece of plastic on it, hopefully it can last more than a year. So you get a whole lot out of this little um, nice bottle of paste. I'm going to let this dry for at least an hour and then I cut out my thanks and when I put my thanks on my card I just thought it was a little too bright. I didn't want to take away from the intense amazing detail of these sunflowers so I decided to do inlaid die cutting and use that gold thanks as kind of an outline so that hopefully you'd be able to see it a little bit better against this. So I'm applying thanks to my card. This always makes me a little bit nervous because I want to make sure I've got it taped down and then it's not going to mess up the card. So I'm going to send it through and cut out the black thanks. And then look, I lined up the gold right behind it. So yes, it is somewhat camo, but it gives a really cool look to the person who gets it. It's just kind of like a hidden little treat. I went on and did the ink blending on the red one. Like I said, you can find all of the inks and such that I used. Um, I decided that this one I was going to add some Copic marker details, some pen details, and some colored pencil details. And I'm going to kind of show you how that pans out, and I'll show you the original stenciled card versus the card that I added these pencil things. You can really be free with this. You could probably use a brown or a gray pencil as well. You don't have to have something. And this pencil doesn't match perfectly. It's just a little darker red than what the card is. And so it gives that nice shadow, and it makes the leaves of these sunflowers just have a little bit more like veining look which really looks cool i'll show you the comparison card and you're going to be shocked this pencil is one of the polychromos it comes in a set i do use these pretty regularly just to add to stenciled images so i highly recommend 
So now that I'm done, I'm removing it from the sticky mat. Remember I said bend the sticky mat and it looks beautiful, but you don't realize how beautiful it looks until you do the comparison. So let me pop the two up side by side and you are going to see the drastic difference in these two. Okay, here's the comparison. The left is the original image with just ink blending. The right has the pen detail. How cool is that? I think it looks so good. On this card, I did a special technique to create a slanted, kind of partially cut out sentiment. So I was going to show you that really quick. You can partial die cut just by wherever the edge of that clear plate is. That's going to cut. Everything else will stay the same. So if you want to cut out part of your sentiment, you can do it just like this. You will need some scissors and a ruler if you want to be absolutely exact, but I'm just going to use some scissors and cut to the point where the thinks is cut and just try to keep it as straight of a line as I can. And if I go to the same place that it's cut on the other side, I'm going to have a pretty straight line. But like I said, I'm always a ruler fan, so feel free to just make a quick little mark that you can erase and draw a nice straight line to cut this out. So you go up and then look, we've cut off that piece, the die cutting cut the shape of it, and then we cut the little sides there on the, on the edge. And now we've got this piece that we can put on our card. Look at how cute that looks when you put your thanks word in it. So you need a word die that has a shadow to be able to do this. So I put the thanks right in there and I just love how it turned out. Ah, oh, let's see the green card now. Okay, let's look at this last card. Now, don't be afraid to go really dark with your green leaves on this. Do you see how dark that is on the end of my pouncer? It's a very dark color, but remember, it's mixing in with white. So it's kind of toning that color down, and you really do need a very dark color to show up on the green. So I used kale, and it did perfectly. Let me show you the reveal. All right, so here's what it looks like just ink blended, and we're going to do one extra thing to it that really is going to make this shine and look amazing. This card, I really wanted the yellow to stand out a little bit more, so I decided I was going to use a paste on a small part of the leaves, and this paste is clear sparkle. It's called Paper Glitz, and you can get that at Simon Says Stamp. You do want to stir it up before you use it, and it's a little bit more liquidy than other pastes, so just be cautious of how much you're putting on. And make sure that your stencil is secured because if you have little air bubbles under your stencil with this being a little bit more liquid, you're going to get it um, like a blob on your project if you don't um, have your stencil secured really well. So just make sure you're either holding on to it, taped it down, something like that before you start with the glitz. Okay, let's see the reveal here. And... I'm going to have to hold it up for you for you to get the full effect, but you can see that those sunflowers are much brighter now. They have that sparkle to them. This is what I used. I know I didn't give you a chance to look at that cap. It's paper glitz. It's the color is called sparkle. And let's look and see if you can tell. I really think you can tell it on the final project too, because I found something that reminded me of this sparkle and that was gold glitter paper. So I'm going to show you how good gold glitter paper looks next to this and I feel like it helps you to see the sparkle plus on this one it's dry so it does look more gold so before it was still wet when I just took it off and now it's kind of absorbed that yellow color so it looks like a gold glitter paste and I just love how those little gold accents really make a difference once again I am Nikki and I had so much fun being here with you today I have all of the details of these cards in a blog post so make sure to check that everything that we used in the cards will be linked in the description and I hope that you really thought about ways you can stretch your stencils and your other supplies to make lots of different cards. I had so much fun. Have a great day. Make sure if you hadn't done it yet hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you soon. Bye! Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.